Locked on Browns podcast. As you can already see, we got a special guest in the building. Captain Jack himself, Dequell Jackson, a Browns legend, is in the building to help us break down this Atlanta Falcons game coming up on Sunday. We'll talk about the linebacker room. What's going on with that? How can the Cleveland Browns get people in, in, in positions to make plays without some of their key players? Then we're gonna, we'll go ahead and we'll get into what the Atlanta Falcons do better. They got a three-headed monster. They got some guys on the offensive side of the football that can give us some trouble. How do we slow those guys down? And then finally, Jacoby Brissett's been playing as spectacular as, as far as I'm concerned and over his head. Can he still consistently play that way moving towards the 11 game mark before Deshaun Watson comes back. We'll talk about all these things and more on this episode of the Locked on Browns podcast. You are locked on Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB, on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to you by Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate you all who make Locked On Browns your first listen every day, whether it's on your favorite podcast platform, of course, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, uh, notifications on. You know, Garrett and I just here another week just trying to crush out as much content as we can get you guys, get you all ready for Sunday uh, as the Browns travel down to Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. For a matchup with the Atlanta Falcons, your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Your host, Mr. Garrett Bush, at GBush91, part of the ultimate Cleveland sports show, 11 to 1, Monday through Friday. And happy 100 episodes are ready to the ultimate Cleveland sports show. Man, it goes by quick. Barbershop 92.3, the fan. Always, you know, appearances from Garrett over there. Make sure you check it out. We are sitting down with Dequell Jackson, uh, former Cleveland Browns linebacker, Indianapolis, Col Indianapolis Colts linebacker. As I was joking with Dequell, my first memory of him, everybody knows me, lifelong Florida State fan. Dequell in Doak, pick six off of Chris Ricks. Made for a uh, interesting, interesting afternoon Ooh. for me as a Florida State fan. Dequell <laughs> was the man back in the day, and obviously you all got to see it uh, for years as he you know, roamed around the field for the Cleveland Browns. Dequell, a couple things we want to get into here. Um, all of a sudden, this Browns defense, and it, it, I think everybody to this point probably would be a little stunned that we're talking about the Browns defense maybe underachieving a little bit to this point, and maybe the offense was the stronger of the two units. But now, as we get into it a little bit more here, you know, with these injuries, you know, you got guys dinged up on the defensive line. You know, right now you have maybe three edges that can go Sunday. You might have to dip into the practice squad. Linebackers, you maybe only have four linebackers currently on the 53 ready to go Sunday. Uh, what do you do here if you're Joe Woods? I mean, look, it's not like, you know, Tony Fields. It's not like Jacob Phillips haven't gotten reps. It's not like maybe, you know, it's crazy to think that, uh, you know, a third-year player or a second-year player are ready for some extended playing time. What do you do here if you're Joe Woods? Because, you know, Atlanta, I mean, you know, the record may not show it, but these guys can put some points on the board. Yeah, this this is a tough situation to be in this early in the season. You know, the, the one thing that you try to pride your hat on as a coach and as a team, especially when you have really good players up front, is health. How healthy can you be? And right now, going up against the Atlanta Falcons, this game scares the hell out of me because of the style of offense that the Falcons run with Marcus Mariota, he's going to spend a lot of time with the RPO action, the pistol sets. And what that tells me as a former player, anytime we face a quarterback on offense that was set up through the pistol and the RPO sets, you have to be gap century up front. And right now with the uncertainty from the D-line standpoint, Jadavion Clowney possibly can be out, Miles Garrett having a car crash, you know, losing a walk. Last, last game, you know, the uncertainty with JOK, there's a lot of uncertainty of guys that know how to play together. And this game here, you need to be fundamentally sound from a linebacker standpoint, from a D-line standpoint, from the edge standpoint, because that's what they want. They want to create confusion. And right now, the confusion is that you don't know who's, who's going to be up defensively. So this game, when you look at the offensive side of the ball, Marcus Mariota poses a threat. You have some young talent in Kyle Pitts, who has an elite, elite 
just running ability. And he had a really good game against the Seattle Seahawks that they won in Seattle. So, and then they have Drake London. They have other guys that pose a big threat to, you know, a defense arguably, you know, we talked about it at length on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We thought the defense and particularly the back end of the defense was going to be the stronghold of this team. It's funny how it's funny how every year, you know, uh, unfolds. Right now, the offense is the the staple, and we knew that coming in. We knew we were going to have a steady dose of running game with Nick Chubb and Kareem mm-hmm. Hunt. But these first three weeks, aside from the first week, Jacoby Brissett has been playing lights out. And so, uh, from the defense standpoint, it's scared. It's really scary to go against an offense that that has a that hangs their hat on the misdirection and causing confusion. And, you know, it, we'll see how Joe Wood's game plan is because right now you have to be as simple as possible. You can't throw a ton of different things at these guys right now because we saw in the back end the last few weeks, well, every game this season, at some point or another, regardless of how well this defense has played, there's been some miscommunication issues that keeps reoccurring. And Anthony Walker was a huge part of that. And what's funny is when he got hurt, I reached out to him. I didn't have his number uh, directly, but I reached out to him from social media standpoint just to get my condolences, just to make sure, hey, man, listen, you know, I, I know that the news sucks that you won't be, you'll be out for the season, but this team needs your leadership more than any point in the season. Yeah, you know what's so crazy is, is, is I look at it from a standpoint of, you know, when he went down, when Anthony Walker went down, I, I thought about you back back when you was there with the with the Browns, and um, you know, going through an injury and and not being able to to be there at the end of your time. I thought right. that was a parallel, and both of you guys in, ended ended up. You you went to Indianapolis. He right. came from Indianapolis. Um, right. you know, same type of a, a, a vocal leadership. How, you know, you mentioned this. They're not going to be able to run anything crazy. Right. And for me, it's almost like if, if I was Joe Woods, I would, I would, I would be thinking, okay, I, I should break tendency here. Like I should, mm. you know, I'm I usually rush four. I might want to come with some zone blitzes. I usually run some some cover three and cover four in the back. Maybe I mix that up on one side of the field. Maybe go man to man coverage on one side and zone on the other side and yeah. kind of switch it up. Um, what what is the the challenge for? Uh, a new guy like Phillips coming in, calling the plays, and getting everybody set up. And in the in the league, is there are there some teams that have the secondary do it or a safety do it rather than a linebacker, or is it all the linebacker? Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that, G. But you don't want to. You don't want a, a a safety or a back end guy calling the defense because you got to speak the same language to the D lineman. That may mm. be. Uh, 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 you know, in every call, it tells the defense alignment whether you're stunning or not. And there's a lot of communication between the linebacker and D-line just on fronts that you see. So if that's the case, well, we better hold our breath. But I, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. And for, for uh, Jacob Phillips, I think this is, this is a part of maturation of the lead. We got to see, we have to, you know, here's the thing. As a linebacker, guys... I always pride myself on always being an every down linebacker for the simple fact that I can make more plays, but also Mm -hmm. guys get used to hearing your voice, how you take command of the voice, things that you say in different situations of the game, you know, alerting them to your, 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 your study habits, your tendencies. Hey, they could be doing this. Hey, expect this call from the coordinator. You have a tendency to, to try to prep guys beforehand. So the challenge is, I'm not sure if any new signal caller will be polished enough to do that, but doesn't say it couldn't work. So these guys have to do a great job of uh, enunciating, uh, really being loud with that call. It's something as simple as communicating to the other 10 guys, because a lot of times I've been around other guys where, you know, hey, I was dead tired. And I was like, hey, you know, call the, call the defense. And it was just, it was a shit show. I was like, oh my God, I, I can't, I can't do that anymore. So. Uh, it's a lot that goes on. It's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. The communication that guys hear from your signal caller goes a very long way. And if you, and I'm sure any guys who play with like greats like Ray Lewis, they would tell you, hey, we we trusted him. We trusted the checks he would get us into. We trusted that he was making the right call. 
uh, and so forth. So there's a is a there's, there's going to be some some learning curve here definitely for these young linebackers. And uh, there's another linebacker that comes to mind that I thought I had a really decent game against um, the Steelers was uh, Sion. Um, Sion, uh, Taki Taki. Taki Taki, yes, Taki yep. Taki. So he's, he's another solid. guy that's going to be in rotation. And th- those two guys, uh, Jacob Phillips and Sion, they're really decent. I think I thought they were the best coverage linebackers. And to your point about mixing it up, you're going to have to. You're going to have to bring some sort of tendency because if you sit back and allow this team to just read your mail, you know, pre-snap, it can be a long day. It's going to put a lot of pressure on this offense that arguably is playing better than anticipated in the throwing game from Jacoby Brissett. So uh, it, it poses its challenges, but I do think you have enough guys. That, and now this is the time with the back end, you know, the Josh um, – uh, Johnson's and and Ronnie Harrison. I don't know if he's going to be a, those guys have to step up right now to lead this young linebacking core that will ultimately trickle over to this D line. No, and I agree with you. It's definitely on the secondary because look, you know, uh, the onus has kind of been on them for three weeks, and you know the deficiencies in their play as a group. And I think this is nothing. You know, this is something that none of us kind of expected to this point. But Garrett, I do agree with you. Look, it's Marcus Mariota, and there's a reason you bounce around the league and you're not the man with a team as a quarterback. It's processing. So if you're throwing things at him and it's like, well, we got three games of film. None of this was on game film. Guess what? A guy like Marcus Mariota, he doesn't he doesn't react as fast to seeing things on the fly. So to get him off of his game, that is definitely something you're going to look to do here to Marcus Mariota. We are sitting yeah. here with uh, – yeah. go ahead. I can add this one point. You're going to have to change the math behind the line of scrimmage with all the misdirection and the pistol sets and the RPOs. you got to bring a guy off the edge somehow, yep. somewhere. I remember when we were with uh, – when I was with the Colts, and I, we played uh, Mariota. And we literally, based on the formation set, we would have a mass check where they came out in pistol. We, we checked into a um, – uh, corner blitz, not an actual corner blitz, but pressure off the edge. So just mm-hmm. to change the map, just to give him a quicker read so he's not sitting back there very comfortable and, and you know, to make him uh, stressed out in a sense. Yeah, definitely, man. De- definitely a way to work it with Marcus Mariota. We are sitting here with Tequel Jackson, former Cleveland Browns linebacker, uh, getting you guys prepped as much as we can here for Sunday. Browns in Atlanta against the Falcons. Stick around your latest Locked On Browns. Look, guys, you don't want to end up the meme, the gif, the video on social media that's there forever because you set up the ultimate, ultimate proposal to your fiance and you lost the ring in the sand or you dropped the ring in the ocean. Do not be that guy. It'll be the worst day of your life. And I guess, guess what? She may have said yes on the video. But chances you're ever walking down the aisle with her go from slim to none. You don't want to be that guy. And you certainly don't want to splatter all over the internet. The guys at Bright Co. Jewelry Insurance will make sure you get a replacement for the full value of that ring. No matter if it's lost, stolen, or you just can't figure out what happened to it. Go to bright.co forward slash locked on. It's the fastest cheapest way to cover your butt insurance in the business. These guys at Brightco are geniuses. They made buying insurance for your engagement ring, your watch, or whatever. So freaking easy. You can get covered in two minutes on your cell phone. You won't find a better deal on great coverage. That's super affordable. Bright.co forward slash locked on. We all hate insurance, right? These guys at Brightco turn the whole experience around, so it's probably the easiest thing you can do for yourself this week. No excuses, man. For five bucks a month, you get totally comprehensive coverage, and it won't take you more than two minutes on your cell phone. Check it out. Brightco, Brightco, Bright.co forward slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked on Brown podcast. Special guest in the building, Dequel Jackson, former captain of the Cleveland Browns. What better person to have him break down uh, this game coming up against the Atlanta Falcons here on Sunday, 1 p.m. Uh, down in Atlanta. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit in that first segment about, you know, the linebackers and, and the impact of missing uh, Anthony Walker, potentially not having JOK. How do you get the signals in? What is the uh, what, what is the way that the Browns will have to, you know, kind of work around not having their communication leader on, on Sunday? Um, fellas, let's pivot to uh, – the guys that we were talking to or talking about for the Falcons that are that could potentially give the Browns some some trouble from the offensive standpoint. Um, you look at uh, you know, Kyle Pitts, 
I think they just now started to wrap their head around Kyle Pitts. They have not got him involved. He Last game was the first game where I've, I've seen them try to get him the ball and, and maybe even force feed him a little bit. Last year, he was not, you know, he didn't never had any breakout games or was spectacular. He was consistent, but I think there's finding more ways to get him involved. Uh, you look at Drake London. Uh, Dequell, you mentioned that earlier. Drake London looks like he's going to be one of those real deal players around here. Um, big body, big guy. He plays nasty. Um, you know, he said, he says, I just hate DBs. <laughs> so he out here trying to Randy Moss people every week. Uh, so you look at, you look at, uh, with that. And then obviously Marcus Barriota gives you some, um, some issues with his legs. He's one of those guys that if he gets outside, he could take it the distance. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's one of those dudes, especially on the read options and the RPOs that could give the Browns trouble, especially if they're going to have to be playing Isaiah Thomas and, uh, and some of these other younger guys, Alex Wright, uh, up, up front. And then, to me, one of the uh, one of the best stories or uh, interesting story is the progression of Cordell Patterson, um, going from a guy who is just returning punts and kicks to now he's you know one of the top five rushers in the league. He never really seems like he has a big body, the body type to to play a uh, uh, running back. But needless to say, he still looks good. Um, Dequel, what are your thoughts and, and who are you, who, what most scares you about the, uh, Falcons on offense and some of those group of players? So the, the one area I see as a threat, uh, for this Cleveland Browns defense is, uh, Kyle Pitts, you know, Kyle Pitts, uh, he definitely is a, a mismatch, you know, nightmare for, you know, like we talked about before where we have a walk that's out right now. He's out for the season. We have JOK who possibly is dealing with it. He possibly won't be available because he's dealing with a groin injury. And he's one of those backers that he can run with a guy like Kyle Pitts. And so, you know, you look at last week's game against Seattle, they, Kyle Pitts was a focal point of their offense. He aligned in the backfield. Uh, it was moving them all over the place. So he became a focal point. And that's what scares me because in the middle, if we decide to, if, if, from the Falcons standpoint, if they decide, you know what, we're going to attack the middle of our defense uh, with our linebackers, that that to me is is an unfavorable matchup for the Browns. But, you know, then you look at Drake London. Drake London, you know, he's he's becoming a man's man, and he clearly is going to be one of those young guys, rookie guys that he's going to – obviously he's playing well. He's got the confidence to play well. And with all the woes we've had – on the back end, just from a communication standpoint, uh, that can be a problem. That can really be a problem. And then you talk about Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson, in my opinion, has evolved in his career. We walked into the league. He was a high draft pick. He was a returner specialist. And now he's morphed into this guy that you can place at the running back position. He wears the number 84, so it throws you off. But He's a guy that he can, he's obviously can run, he's a decent route runner, but he's had most of his success running the football. And quite frankly, you know, their rushing attack is one of the top in the league. And this a lot has to do with his production in the backfield. So uh, this is a team that obviously they're one and two. They, they lost against the Saints and they lost against a, a pretty good Rams team. But this team is, is fighting for their first home win. And this is a scary matchup. This is a very scary matchup scary matchup for me with the Browns and they have a lot of a lot of weapons on the offensive side of the ball in terms of uh, the Falcons the way I look at it here and this is one of the things that probably gives me some pause and hesitation uh to quell you know, we talk about the communication issues that have existed to this point and obviously now it's going to be more newer personnel who haven't played as much and you talk about a guy like Pitts you talk about a guy like London and if it is zone type of coverage it, it, the importance of making sure when you're handing the guy out of your zone to the next zone. So, you know, whether it's Jacob Phillips, whether it's Fields, whether it's Taki Taki, you know, making sure they and safety are on the same page. Look, he's not mine anymore. He's yours. That's what kind of gives me some, you know, concerns here because, you know, you saw with Pitts, there could be a lot of work done over the middle. You know, London, look, he's a mismatch problem at, 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 at first and foremost because you would just say, oh, well, Denzel Ward, your number one corner, their number one receiver. We know Denzel does have issues sometimes when he's given up four or five inches like he could be to a guy like Drake London. So could you get a little bit into that for me about, you know, the yeah. communication and the importance of understanding, you know, look, he's no longer mine. He's yours now. And, you know, everybody basically flowing together with that. 
Yeah, when, when we talk about, when I talk about communication, it's actually talking, you know, when, and it's actually using your eyes. A lot of these young backers, you can look at the Browns all throughout the league, young zones um, coverage backers, they don't, they tend to get locked in on the, the quarterback. The quarterback is going to lie to you. And so I, I would have a coach that really took my zone coverage to the next level. It's like, listen, you have to, as you drop in your coverage, you have to peek and read. First and foremost, read the formation. Look who could possibly be your threat in your zone. And as you're dropping to your zone, your eyes are looking at routes and looking up routes. So it's a combination of you looking at route combinations, looking back at the quarterback. And if a guy comes to your zone, and most zone coverages in the National Football League, now it becomes a zone man concept. Until you deliver, you carry and deliver him to your next zone defender. And when I say that, that means if a guy's going underneath, I got him, I got him, I got him. As he moves out of your, your zone, as you carry and deliver, hey, uh, in, 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 or out, out, you always have to communicate. So because other guys have different threats, and I think this is what, again, this is the concern because there's a not a lot. There's going to be a lot of moving pieces, a lot of new pieces in this in this uh, sec or uh, from the linebacker standpoint. And you have to become comfortable with all the guys you're playing with, how they communicate. So that is a concept. If you have that concept in your head, stop locking in on the um, the quarterback. Now you'll be able to put yourself in a better position and get in throwing lanes of the throw. Because when you look back at when I watched the uh, Atlanta and Seahawks game. The first play of the game on offense from Atlanta, they took a shot. They took a shot. And so, you know, they're going to – Marcus Mariota isn't afraid to throw the ball down the field. So it's going to be very important that we keep them one-dimensional because I think that will be the difference of the ball game in terms of who can, who's, who can be more efficiently throwing the football. And I think if you make them one-dimensional, make them go the long, hard way and not give up the big chunk plays in the air, I think that bowls to our favor because, you know, you look at last week against our offense had a um, possession time of thir over 36 minutes. Now, if you have the ball over 36 minutes as an offense, you should win that game. You're controlling the clock. You're running the ball well, and you're methodically going down the field. So uh, in terms of, you know, a cover standpoint, this that's one area our defense has to do a better job with. Totally agree. Um, I, I think if if they can do some of those things that you talked about, um, and, and just play, I, I'm not asking them to play superhuman. I, I I'm not twist. You gonna get it twisted. I mean, they're gonna get some points. Uh, this may be a game where you may ask the offense to hold you down a little bit. You may ask the offense, hey, you know, if the Browns can hold them to three when it looked like they're gonna give up seven, that's a win. Things like that. Special teams have to be on point. There's no win. There's no nasty conditions. You're supposed to be able to convert on everything you need to convert on in your field goal game. And then at the end, hopefully you can keep it with win, uh, one or two scores. And, and maybe Jacoby Brissett makes a couple of throws. And hopefully Nick Chubb is able to get a couple first downs to, to you know, ice the game. So I, this is going to be a really intriguing game. And I'm not going to tell the, I hey, if you're thinking this is going to come in and it's going to be a cakewalk, I'm sorry. No this is going to be a nail biter. Um, and I, I think it's going to be one that's going to come down to the end. Like it's, it's traditionally done the last three weeks. Yeah. These teams are pretty equally yoked in terms of, you know, look at the, the Falcons offense, they rank in the top five in rushing and they're towards the middle of the pack passing. And when you look at the Browns, obviously they're probably the number one, they are the number one rushing attack in the league, but in terms of passing, they're closer to that midway point. So this, this, this game could come down to obviously who can win the time of possession. And I think who can turn the other team over more than the other. Right. And you got to make your kicks. You got to, you know, not give up the big chunk plays right now until you get all your studs back. You know, the, the, this will be an impressive win in my opinion, if those guys that we mentioned earlier don't play and they're still able to play efficiently offensively and to get better defensively. You know, last week or Thursday night against the Steelers, I thought our defense played well for three and a half quarters. There was at times they let Trubinsky throw the ball down the field. And again, that goes back to Joe Woods and this off coverage standpoint. And quite frankly, our defense is better at playing man. Better at yep. playing man today our zone. And right now you can get away with it, but as the season progresses and obviously injuries are starting to make um starting to show its head and different bodies 
inexperienced bodies are playing more, you're gonna be you're gonna have to be able to play zone at some some point, and you have to be really good at it to give your corners and your secondary a break. Well, with with that and what we're talking about here, now you're talking about you know guys. Look, it's it's third year in the system for Jacob Phillips. It's second year in the system for Tony Fields. So it's not like look, you're not bringing street free Asians in here, and these guys were drafted. Eventually, your time was going to come. Uh, you got to show that you've been paying attention. You got to show that, you know, you've been putting in the work, you've been watching the film and, you know, you're, you know, participating in practice, you know, not just being there. So we'll see the way it all plays out. We're going to flip it up here though. Cause um, you know, uh, did bring up a little bit of a Jacoby Brissett here. We want to get his opinion a little bit on that. So we're going to get to that. Garrett Bush, Jeff Lloyd joined by Dequel Jackson, your latest lockdown Browns. As always, we appreciate everybody who makes lockdown Browns their first listen day in day out, whether it's in podcast form, on your favorite podcast platform, make sure you're following, subscribe there. YouTube, subscribe to the show, get those notifications on. You will get the content as soon as it drops. Dequel, the thing I first take away with Jacoby, and like, look, you don't know guys do you truly have to cover them when they play for your franchise. Like Amari Cooper, you know, I, I knew about the route running ability. Now, like, it, it, you just see it. it like, it, it almost basically just blows up in your face. Jacoby, I think the one thing I didn't know about Jacoby, and look, the mechanics look slow. He's a bigger, kind of longer guy, but the arm strength. He's got some pretty serious arm strength. It, you know, so there's times where it's like, wow, it looks like it's slow coming. And then you just see a dart, and you're like, all right, well, that overcomes everything else I had a concern about. But his play to this point, um, it, it's more than the Browns could have possibly asked for. You know, week one was shaky. We Garrett and I talked about we thought maybe he should have used gotten a little more work over the summer. But now that he's into it, man, it just seems to be going really, really well for seven. Yeah, he, he's playing better than anticipated. And I think in terms of the long ball, listen, he's he's being confident where he's going with it. You know, he's throwing the ball off that back foot and timing and route and timing of the route. So, and I think the progression from week one to week two to week three, he was decisive. He wasn't, he wasn't second guessing himself. He was scanning the field. And I think he used more of, you know, just the check down Charlie mindset. Listen, if you have that two back set, which they don't do a ton of, which will be a threat at some point, when you have Kareem Hunt who's playing for a contract, hey, when he swing, does a swing route, give him the ball. I think he'll win that matchup one on one nine times out of ten. I think he did more of that than trying to to be the problem solver every single down. And you saw it. And, and I think Kevin Stefanski did a really good job of of them two probably meeting. And saying, hey, you know what? Give me the plays that you're very comfortable with for the first 15. Because the first 15, as you all know, from an offense standpoint, it's all scripted. They want to, it's all scripted. You want to run high efficient plays that the quarterback feels really good with. And also, they did a great job of in-game, what do you call it? Um, In-game scouting, right? Last week, our tight end, Njoku, had a career day. You know, uh, it was it eight or eight or nine receptions? Had a really big day in the touchdown. So they saw matchups within the game, and and um, Jacoby Brissett was able to manipulate those and, and hit those targets. So I think he's building confidence with the tight end. He's obviously built the confidence the last two weeks with uh, Mari Cooper. Um, so he's playing. He's playing really good football. And you know what? Is as a quarterback, it feels good to know that you're actually contributing to the to the wins, knowing that you know from a defensive standpoint, we're not playing as well as we had all hoped. But uh, in terms of you know Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, we know what we're going to get out of these guys every single week. We're going to get we're going to get above average you know production. Uh, I think Jacoby Brissett is settle, settling in. Uh, you know, you look at the past three games, we've scored a lot of points. I don't think anyone would imagine we were scoring 31, 29, 24 points. Um, and it was a lot to do with the offense. So I think they keep building. I think they get better as this season progresses. And there's another opportunity to get better, to clean some things up. And hopefully this defense comes around and uh, they can break out of this sort of slump or, or lack of expectations that, uh, you know, we've seen from them the last few weeks. You know, I, you know, there's this thing going around. Dequell is is talking like, "Hey, is uh, Jacoby Brissett actually good?" Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like it's it is like I don't know what what they mean by that. I mean, I, I've been watching football or playing football in some measure for I don't know, God knows, like thirty. I'm forty one, but but for yeah. the you know for like thirty years, like when somebody says, "Hey, 
uh, are you good or not? And I'm like, well, that's not a, uh, a that's not a question you ask. Just take a look at what was happening on, on the field. Yeah. I think sometimes people get caught up in the, the names, and, and I always try to tell people names are good. Names are only names if those names do something. And mm-hmm. so right now, Jacoby Brissett may not have a name, but he's playing like a top ten quarterback right now. Yeah. I don't. No, no, I, I agree. What, what the difference between I, you know, I heard the noise too. G, it's like, oh, we know who he is. He's a perennial journeyman, etc. Go et win the game because it's Jacoby Brissett. I, I, I mean, I, the amount of tweets I took for uh, just people with that statement alone, it was like, well, I don't hear nobody now. Yeah, it's like the guy is a smart. Listen, he played on the he played on the Tom Brady. He played on the the New England Patriot way. He understands how to win football games. I feel like now with Kevin Stefanski. You listen, I, I said this before the season. He's only he's going to either take a lot of the blame or he's going to take a lot of the credit for the development of this offense and how he manages Jacoby Brissett. Say what you want about the, him not playing in the preseason, which I think he should have just to get his feet mm-hmm. wet so he hit the ground rolling. But it, back to Jacoby Brissett, I think he's comfortable. He understands. This is a, Kevin Stefanski has provided a very – comfortable community of football there so he feels confident in his ability again you have two great running backs you have you have weapons from the tight end standpoint from the receiver stand. I always thought he was the best option over a Jimmy Garoppolo when that noise started to show his head because he understood how to play the game and he also understood you know what I'm just holding this seat down until Deshaun Watson comes back and I think he was mature enough to be able to handle a situation like that and not let it become this quarterback controversy and this tension throughout the quarterback room. I think that had a lot to do with it. And I think his mentality of how he approaches the game is a direct, you know, a result of, of him playing as well as he is right now. And I just got one last one here before we go to 12. I think one thing that a lot of people aren't factoring into this, look, this was a four o'clock West Coast game for Atlanta last week. Brown's got the four extra days. You've got – and look, one thing Atlanta's defense, and they've given up yards on the ground. Yes. But you haven't faced the best running game in the NFL yet, the best running back in the NFL, and by, by far the best 1B running back in the NFL. Right. So – and with, you know, you factor in, you know, Nick, you know, you, you only get an opportunity, you, you know, if you play in Cleveland but you're from the southeast, you maybe get one opportunity to go play in your home area in your entire NFL career. Right. And Knicks do that. So I, I think there's a lot that people are not putting <laughs> into the fact that you know, Atlanta's got to deal with this. I mean, we're talking superlatives about the Atlanta offense, but this Browns run game and the fact that they get four extra days going into this, that's got to be a big, big factor for Cleveland. Boy, that's going to be scary for Atlanta's defense because they're rushing defense. <laughs> you know, you saw the way Seattle just marched down the field early in the game and, all I could think about was like, boy, Nick Chubb is gonna have a big day. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, wait, you know, Rashard Penny, you're a nice player and all, but you ain't. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you know, uh, yeah, you, you, you know, Nick Chubb, and he's back home at the crib. Man, we, Man. we when we started this, when Man. we started this show, you talked about how you know your first impression of me or, or was the Florida State game, right? It's like, listen, when you're playing back home, when you've been away for so long, you, you're you know, family, friends get to come out and see you play. You know, people after, you know, before the game, you get to hang out with us. That motivates. Now it feels like a Little League game. You know, and anyone who's ever played the game from a Little League standpoint, you know, the whole community, I'm from the South, the whole community came out. Everyone came. So you get that feel and you want to you want to put on for your, your home crowd. So uh, he's definitely going to have a big day as expected. Um Again, more days to rest. So, yeah, the 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 Falcons defense is going to have a handful, and I expect our offense to play well, efficiently, and I expect Jacoby Brissett in this passing game and then uh, David and Joku to get more involved and be more in lead and just keep building off of the performance they've had the last few weeks. Could agree more. Could agree more. It's going to be a great opportunity um, for the Browns to go 3-1. and one. And like you said, Jeff, it's all about just getting to the next game, win or survive. 
<laughs> right, you got right. it, you know, cause, and then you got another seven days to figure out how you're going to do it. And, you know, as we've been mentioning here, you know, you got the Chargers in two weeks who all of a sudden now don't have their best pass rusher and also don't have the left tackle. So, you know, every week in the NFL, I mean, it changes tremendously the storylines. Um, but this is, you know, what's what you got to go get. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. You're going to be down a little bit, but in the 17 game season, there's definitely games where you're down, you're shorthanded, but, you know, you got pros. <laughs> go, you know, got to go, you know, basically, you got to, you don't cast the paycheck, go earn the paycheck, so to speak. Um, it was great having DeQuell Jackson on here today. Had breakdown Falcons here. Uh, some thoughts on the Browns uh, to this point. Garrett Bush going to go kick it here. A hundredth episode of Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show here. Boys, just getting started, though. Just tipping the, you know, basically just climbing the mountain here. Um, so we get to go enjoy all that. Make sure you check it out. 11 to 1, Monday through Friday on YouTube. Uh, at GBush91, of course, Saturday mornings. The Barbershop. Me, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you subscribe to the show on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Got those notifications on so you can get the content as it drops with all that being said, I uh, got one more to go here this week. We've been crushing it content wise, but this has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on ELOB. Let's go, Browns.